There have been many times when my opinion on cloud computing almost got me fired. So I kind of debated whether I should be doing this video or not, but I, I do get a number of questions because I've, I've been in this industry, <laughs> whatever role that I play, and I seem to play many different roles uh, as thought leader, influencer, whatever. Uh, you know, someone who people think I'm a journalist, which I'm not. People think I'm an analyst, which I'm not. People think, you know, I'm a uh, developer, which and in many instances, since I do have full time jobs at these organizations and if there's some sort of a partnership relationship or some sort of a friendship or some sort of, you know, any kind of a casual casual situation there, suddenly they reach out to people who I work for and ask that uh, I be uh, disciplined or let go. So first and foremost, and I decided this many years ago, that I would tell the truth. Uh, so I wouldn't, you know, hold punches, so to speak, if I had an issue with a specific type of technology or looked at patterns of use. So things like the cost of cloud computing, you know, being uh, overly burdensome for many of the enterprises out there is kind of a core opinion that I've had for many years. And I'll kind of, I'll kind of talk you through what, what those are and we'll go through each of the uh uh, messages that I put out there, and this is only just a small fraction of them, and how the industry reacted and how basically they were calling for my head. And uh, it's interesting to me because it should be interesting to you because if you're trying to figure out this industry, you know, understand that forces are at work, which you may not be aware of behind the scenes that may cause issue with you understanding all aspects about this industry, specifically cloud computing. So, over the years ago, I've written extensively about the growing trend of cloud repatriation. Well, if that doesn't get correct anytime soon, and then in many instances, it's going to be more uh, financially viable for them to move their workloads and their data sets, you know, back to their on-prem systems because those have gotten very cheap. In my experience, the cloud true costs, data egress, over-provisioning and operational surprises uh, often catch enterprises off guard. And so I was getting a lot of enterprises calling me up and they say, well, we, we thought we'd be paying $10,000 a month for the cloud services they're able to buy. I've consistently warned that the over-reliance on a single hyperscaler can limit flexibility, increase long-term costs, and weaken an enterprise's negotiating provision. So cloud vendors often tout security as a differentiator, but I've revealed in many times my past articles and podcasts, things like that, simply moving to the cloud doesn't make you secure. So I haven't shied away from highlighting cloud projects that didn't live up to expectations. And in many instances, the majority of them don't live up to the ROI goals. And therefore, in my opinion, they failed. Hope you like the topic and let me know in the comments if you do. 